I finally found the footage that got lost that was supposed to have been in the video that I uploaded last night. But anyways, basically this is the court proceedings that I would like you to listen to and make your own judgments about whether this witness was relevant at all. Another thing that I meant, I forgot to mention is the fact that Mapisa, when he was in jail, guess what was happening to his car? It was getting speed tickets or violation tickets or whatever that man was calling them. And that was very interesting to me that uh, this guy... He was also caught on several lies, which kind of like gives an impression about this so-called email between him and Gininda. I think the reason why he did not want to give up the email is because it is a damning. I think it has a full story of what exactly he wants this man to do. I think maybe maybe there is some kind of uh, wording that may implicate or may be deemed to say that this is a cooked up case. So not to get himself into trouble for having testified and misled the court, he therefore decided to say, no, this is classified email and yet he's already given up the content of what the email was about. Hence, he was on the stand. So yeah, it's getting interesting in this case and more and more of the clan is, be is being basically proven that this entire case is a fabrication and we stand on that. Anyways guys, here's the clip and we shall talk a little bit later on the self-appointed experts. Uh, morning Mr. Matlu. Morning my lord. Uh, Mr. Matlu, I'm a bit confused. Uh, you were asked a question by my learned colleague as to when accused number one uh, passed his learners and then you said it was a date in September 2014. Is that your evidence? When, when did he pass his, his learners? We know that he failed in Brakpan on the 17th of uh, July 2014. Uh, on, the same, on the same day he went to Boxbeck made another pre-booking and he was booked for the 22nd of July. When did he pass uh, his learners? Uh, if, I, if, I, if, I may, if I if I if I may if I if I may refer my lord because the evidence that I I, I used in my testimony which I was referring to the annex charge. Yes it's so MCC can, can I can I quickly if I'm if I'm allowed can I quickly go and check just to confirm. Yes just, just check MCC uh, 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 exhibit or annexure MCC 01 at page 12. Okay, let me check my note. Okay, he failed on, he failed on the 22nd of sep July ne? Yes. 2014. Then he made the bookings on the same day and he was he was issued with a date to write on the 15th of September 2014. Yes. Then I'm going along with it. Going along, going along with it. Uh, test date is the 15th of September 2014. It is that's, correct. It is correct. That's when he passed. Yes, that's when but he passed. But if you look at your MCC 01 at page 12, page 12, where you said the people that were tested between 12 and 1 p.m. It was on the 15th of September 2015. That's why I'm confused. My lord, on, 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 on NXA MC C01 page 12, yes. these are the results. The test date is the 15th of September 2014. Then go to page 15. Page 15. Uh, of your MCC01. Page 15. Page 15. It shows all the applicants yes. that were there. I also highlighted his name, if you can able to check on his next chart, MCC's 15. Yes. 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 Now go to paragraph 4.18 of your annex chart, uh, AAA in brackets 2. 4.1? Four point one point one eighty one eight. 4.1.18. 4.1.18. My lord, 4.1.18 says Netis record as shown on page 15 of Alexa MCC 01, indicate that the applicants that were examined for learner's license test on 2014 09 15 test time from uh, 12, 12 to 13 
Okay. Now that that then that is clarified. Now let me just three clarification questions on your evidence in chief. The events that form the subject of this case happened on the 26th of October 2014 and your investigations according to the letters that you received from the National Commissioner in 2020 and Brigadier Gininda in 2013 was for you to investigate the period December 2013 to December 2014, correct? My Lord, remember I made two Two affidavits. I'm not sure which affidavit you're talking about. The first affidavit or the second affidavit? The second affidavit from uh, Colonel Genin that was to specifically investigate December 2013 until December 2014, correct? Yes, correct. Yes. Now, with respect to the, the, the events, and it touches on relevance, you cannot assist the court as to the whereabouts of accused number one on the 26th of October 2014. Is that not correct? My Lord, I, I, in my testimony in chief, I, I did read out the reason why I was requested to divorce the statement. Yes. And the uh, issue of relevance does not rely on me. I'm an officer employed by Red Traffic Management as an investigator. When I receive a request to say, uh, we want to know who the accused was, uh, did you obtain the learner's license? I will submit or depose the statement in such regard. Now, regarding the address that is provided so to hostel, N43, Fosterers, Postal Code 1594. Accused number one has been in custody since, uh, in, in prison, not in custody, in Modabi prison since 10 July 2020. And when you opened your system to indicate where he resides, it still shows Soto Hostel. Did it show that? My Lord, this is information that he provided at the driving license testing center. The point that I'm trying to prove to you is that unless the applicant who is a permit holder or a license holder comes to the DLTC or ARTO offices and changes his domicile and his address, that address that he last gave will be reflected as his current address, although he may have moved from the addresses that he provided to you. My Lord, my, my Lord, the act makes a provision that in any term of the regulation H2A says that if you have changed your address, you must inform the appropriate registered authority. Then we both agree. I've got no further questions now. Mr. McLeod, I've got a few <coughs> questions just to <coughs> clarify in order for me to understand the essence of your evidence in respect of Mr. Ntoli. The questions that I'm going to ask, I just need your clarity in case I understood it wrongly. Okay. Let's start with a paragraph H of uh, your statement, but it's part of your evidence, even if you're not going to that paragraph, but it's part of your evidence, okay. which is uh, the infringement that was made or dated 9 February 2016. Madam, yes. Madam, which because I've made two affidavits. Sorry? Which affidavits? Because I've made two affidavits. The first one, which has got 22 pages. Okay. Paragraph? It's paragraph H. H? Yes. Okay, I'm there, my lord. Yeah, it's in respect of uh, the white polo with registration number EKG0615GP. And the date of the infringement, if I'm correct, it's 9 February 2016. That is correct, my lord. Could you detect from your investigation as to who was the lawful owner of this motor vehicle at the time of this infringement? My lord, what I detected is that the permit that was affixed on the motor vehicle was not supposed to be affixed on that motor vehicle because it was lawful, not supposed to be in a lawful position of Volvo Southern Africa, which is based in Boxberg. So you could not detect who the lawful owner of that motor vehicle on this day of the infringement? That is correct, my lord. And then also in your, in your investigation, is it correct that 
there is no any reference that is made of any infringement which occurred under this car, which is white polo, on or about the 26th day of October 2014, in, in your investigations. That is correct, Meros. And then the first one, which is referred to as Nissan Almera, with the first infringement of 14 July 2013. You remember that one? Can we please go to the, to the paragraph so that I can... But it was part of your evidence. It's the first car. It's the first car on page two. I'm not denying my lot. That's the information I, I extracted from the system. So let's not debate. Okay. Yes. Which is the infringement occurred on the 14th of July 2013 under this Nissan Almera. I'm listening, my lot. My question is also from your investigation, holistically. There is no infringement that you detected under the name of Mr. Ntoli, which was infringed on or about the 27th day of October 2014, other than this one. That is reflected in your report. My Lord, I've made reference to various infringement under the accused. I'm referring to the Nissan Almera. From which period? Nissan Almera. You see the Nissan yes, Almera that you testified Lord. about? Yes. Yes. My question is, other than this infringement, which occurred on the 14th of July 2013, do you understand? Yes, I'm listening. Yes. Is there any other infringement that you detected which happened or took place on or about 27 October 2014, other than this infringement in other ways. Under this motor vehicle, no matter. 26, 26 October 2014. Under this Almera, no matter. No, nothing. nothing. Yes, under this Almera. No. And then let's move on to paragraph K, which is, according to my understanding, is the third infringement, but you'll correct me. Paragraph <coughs> K, it's the infringement uh, dated 20 March 2016. You Para see that one? Paragraph? Uh, K. K. Paragraph K. If I'm correct, you. but it's referring to Gray Polo. Yes, I see, my lord. I, I'm there, my lord. The registration number is CT79YZGP. Am I, I correct? It. I see it, my lord. Correct, my lord. Did I understand your evidence correctly to say the lawful owner of that motor vehicle on this particular day, it belonged to Banakoma Fleet. That is correct, my lord. Is there also any infringement which refers to the date of 26 October 2014 under this vehicle on the name of Mr. Ndul? No, my lord. The accused will tell this court that he had hired this motor vehicle only for two days during the period of 2016, not in 2014. That will be his vision, my lord. And also lastly, uh, superintendent, from your investigation also, it, it, it did not reveal as to who possessed this particular motor vehicle, the grey one, the grey polo, on the 27th of October 2014. 26th October 2014, in your investigation. My Lord, I mean, that will be in the records of the hiring company. Yeah, I mean, in your investigation. Yes, my Lord. In your investigation, you could not detect that. That is correct, my Lord. Same with the white polo. In your, in, your ex, in your investigations, you also could not detect as to who was in possession of that motor vehicle on the 27th of October 2014. That is correct, my lord. Okay. And in terms, in relation to the other dates and locations detected by traffic officers under paragraph Q, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe from page 8 to page 15. 
You see those locations detected under the traffic officers? Yes, I see them a lot. Did I understand it correctly that these are the locations which are referring to this gray polo? That is correct, ma'am. Correct. That is correct, ma'am. And all those locations and dates from page 8 of your report up to page 15. They make no reference in respect of Mr. Ntoli. That is correct, my lord. Right. Okay. One, uh, but not last, the, the grey polo. Let me start with the grey polo. You discovered that it belonged to a fleet company. That's correct, isn't it? That's correct, my lord. Did, were you able to get information as to when was it hired to when? In your, in your investigation, or you couldn't detect that information? It was not part of the scope, my lord. Same with the white polo. It was not part of your duties to check as to when, from when to when, was it hired to that particular uh, my lord, fleet? The, my lord, the, the white polo was in position of a fraud. The, 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 the permit that was affixed to the polo was not supposed to be there because when I check on the system, the lawful owner of that permit was Volvo, meaning that that permit was supposed to be somewhere in the offices of Volvo. And it is also evidence that you couldn't verify the real owner of that motor vehicle. That is correct, my lord. Thank you. Thank you, my lord, for no further questions. Yes, yeah, thanks. Yes, any re-examination? Re As a third piece, my lord, just two questions. And starting from the questions that were asked by Advocate Nshololo. Um, she put it to you that uh, accused number five hired the gray polo for two days only in 2016 and not in 2014. And she referred to the color of the vehicle as gray as it stands on the infringement notice. But on Friday, I know she wasn't here on Friday, you did go into the system to establish the true color of this polo. Can you just put it on record? What is the true color of this vehicle? My Lord, the, the true polo? color of the, the polo is silver. And Advocate Mumalo asked you about the first vehicle that was registered under the name of accused number four, and you mentioned that it was in 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 uh, in, 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 in Brackburn on the 25th of July 2014. On the 25th of 25th of July 2014. The minibus that, that, that oh, you described. I recall, my lord. Yes. You mentioned that the first address that was given was 4278 Zake Road. Okay, may, may I refer to the address so yes. that I can uh, agree to the... Yes. 4278 Zake Road, Fosilores, Volkswagen. Okay, if I recall it, it's the one that has been requested by the, by the council, isn't it, my lord? Because the, the council yes. requested the copy. Yes, the, the, the initial address that was given by accused number four. Okay, let, let, me, let me check. Let me quickly open the, the system, my lord.
there is the one for which you made copies for advocate Numana during the adjournment. Okay, that's why I wanted to go straight yes. directly to the email rather than yes. to a live system because the live system is still going to take time because of the network. Yes. If I may go to my emails just, just to check. I'm opening it from the email still loading. Yeah, I open it, my lord. That is the one that is appearing on the screen. When was that notice of that first address given? <coughs> what is the date? Uh, the notice of address, the initial one, my lord, is on the 25th of July, 2014. Thank you, my lord, that is all. <coughs> Thank you. So how many years have you been working as an investigator for NATIS and as a superintendent? Uh, it's more than seven years so far, my lord. Have you ever encountered a situation where a police investigating whatever, the police supply you with a number, a registration number, let's say RATA 12345 GP, and then you go to the system and you discover that that number doesn't exist? It's not possible, my lord. No, it's a cloned number cloned number. Okay. The police come to a robbery scene. Mm. They don't know that that number is cloned. And they request you, like Geninda did, mm. to find out who is the owner of that number, under who, whose name is it registered, which address, etc., etc. My, my Lord, the information will populate on the system. Even if it's cloned. Remember these people... No, no, just listen to me. Okay, my lord. Even if it's cloned. Yes, my lord. What do you understand by cloned? Cloning is that you, you, you duplicate something unlawfully so. That's my understanding of clone. No, you create something also. Oh. You can duplicate and you can create something. Okay. You have never, un <laughs> you have never encountered such a, an exigency. No, I, I've never, my lord. Where What's the what? number... <laughs> you, when you check it, it's nowhere in the system. Nowhere. Because Are you with me? I, I'm following you, my lord. Have you ever found out something like that? I have never, my lord. Okay, fine. And is it a requirement when you register? No, no. Is it a requirement when a person has a vehicle and you want to change the address? of residence, that you must bring documentation proving that you are the owner of that vehicle. That not necessarily the vehicle, but the proof of address where you stay. Yes. So I can register a, a, a vehicle which is not mine. If I give you an ID and say it was registered under Joubek, I want it to be registered under the Free State. Do you demand that? You want to know where I bought this motor vehicle, which, which year, which date, where are the receipts, was it cash, was it under a higher purchase system, that type of inquiry, do you conduct it? 
my lord, to, to change the, the, the registration of license number, mm. it, it's a, there is a requirement documentation that needs to be completed. Yeah. So if we approach the appropriate registering authority with your acceptable identification, and you say, uh, I'm no longer staying in Gauteng, I'm now staying in Limpopo, then you'll be given the files to complete, and they will also request you to produce a proof of resident in a jurisdiction of Limpopo, where you reside. So it is not possible that the, the, the vehicle that does not belong to you can end up belonging to you. Aye, then there's no theft of vehicles in South Africa. My Lord, if are, you, are you listening to yourself? Vehicles are stolen every day. And they are registered every day under false, is that not so? Under false IDs. If you come with my ID, they put their face on my ID. I go to Mr. Sibanda, he's the registering authority. He looks at my ID, forged my ID, he doesn't know. You say that exigency doesn't exist. Uh, but if it exists, but I think in that case, my love, it will be 10%, 10% of it. Ask Mr. Mnesia, she's smiling. <laughs> 10%. Okay, no, that's what I wanted to know. Whether, in fact, do you have specimen forms? Yeah, I, I can, I can. What? Yeah, can you print it for us? Because you kept on saying that uh, when you register... Yes, let me, let, the, let me quickly... The, then you go to personally do it and you must fill in the the particulars and then after having filled the particulars you say there's a penalty clause which warns you that if you provide or furnish false information you are liable to be arrested fined or okay. sent to jail on can conviction I, can i send them to advocate you can't do it now i can do it now no no do it now okay my lord because that is your evidence okay. we don't have the road traffic Act here. Do you have it, Mr. Mr. or any council here? Do you have the Road Traffic Act? Mr. Ngomala, you prepared. You prepared in September last year. You don't have the Road Traffic Act? No, I don't have. So when Mr. Mutrohun keeps on saying the Road Traffic Act says this and this and this, Mufananan. You said it's Act, you said it's act 25 of what? The uh, National Road Traffic Act, yeah. Act number 93 of 1996. 1993 <coughs> of the, 1996. Yes, my lord. My lord, here is the uh, a notification of change of address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just listen to me. Are you able to give us a, a after it has been scanned? It must be scanned like this. It must form part of the exhibits. Is it possible? It's already in a soft copy, so I can just forward it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Is it okay? Anybody? Objection, Mr. Mnisi, Mr. Rappelis, Mr. Mguni, no, Madam Chololo. No objection, thank you. You don't want to have a sight of that phone. We, we can have a sight of the form. Yeah, because he's talking about a form. But we all don't know what the form says. Court papers is that will be exhibit what? Triple A bracket four. Triple A bracket four. Okay. So, I would say, what are they saying? <laughs> what, what, what do you understand by it? It has nothing to do with, it just want for my education. When people say, what do you understand by that? Can I not answer that one? You can't answer it, okay. No, Fine, please. I know why. <laughs> because it's a huge industry. Huge industry. Even I. Even the Chief Justice, the two Chief Justices actually, the previous one and the present one, their cars were stolen. And because of their status, the police, they somehow suspected that they are going to be crossing the Pongola River to, to take them to Mozambique. They knew that, the police. But after that, they recovered them after about three months, six months. They had different uh, registration numbers, different engine numbers. That's it.